Hello, this is Brent Gregory with Basic Building Blocks of Accounting Recording Transactions. So if we consider the accounting process to be recording and then categorizing and then summarizing and finally reporting information, we'll better understand the accounting process. So let's consider this. We record, we have a transaction and then we record that information and we record that information in a journal. Then we categorize that information by posting it to the ledger. In this case we're talking about the general ledger. That information is then summarized in the trial balance before reporting the information in the financial statements. Now there are some other processes through there which we will talk about adjusting the financial statements. Let's consider the fundamental building blocks of accounting. Naturally we start with an account. An account is the basic unit where we the fundamental building blocks of accounting. Let's start with an account. You set up an account for anything that you wish to measure, for anything you wish to produce, have the ability to produce a special report upon. For instance, if you want to know something about stationery, you will need to set up an account for stationery. However, if you'd like to know about pens and paper, you'll need to set up accounts for pens and paper. The chart of accounts is the uh, the list that shows the name and the number of every account and the chart of accounts is a very powerful tool for impacting upon the usefulness of the accounting system. We'll talk more later about the chart of accounts. A journal is the uh, process that brings a transaction to visibility in accounting. So you have a transaction and to bring that transaction into the accounting system you write a journal entry. And that journal entry has at least two sides since we, we talk about the double entry system. And one side is a debit and the other side is a credit. There could be a number of debits that make up the total of the number of credits because the debits equal the credits. The, um, whether an item is a debit or a credit is determined by the accounting equation. And so if the normal balance of an asset is a debit and the normal balance of a liability is a credit and the normal balance of owner's equity is a credit. So what does this mean? This means if you want to indicate the increase in an asset that then you record that as a debit. If you wish to record an increase of a liability, then you record that as a credit. If you wish to record an increase in owner's equity, that is a credit. So once we've written our journal entry, we then need to uh, categorize those items which into um, their particular accounts, and that's we do that by posting it to the general ledger. So the general ledger is where the details of every single account are. The general ledger has every account stored in order, order like the chart of accounts, except we then record all the transactions um, for each account there. And then from there, we take the closing balances of the ledger account to produce the trial balance. What's some important information to know about this topic and that is these things are must knows. So let's look at some of those must know things again because so far we've talked about the accounting equation assets equals liabilities plus owners equity. We understand that accounting information is used for decision making. So that being the case we must have our information organized in such a way as to provide easy access to it. 
and we're going to use the analogy here of a filing cabinet a filing cabinet with many drawers well with three drawers and those three drawers signify the accounting equation assets up the top then liabilities then owner's equity now when we go in to each of those drawers we will find some other significant things because inside each of those drawers we'll find it divided up again and we'll find assets divided up into current assets and non-current assets the definition of a current asset um, simplistically not quite correct but simplistically anything that's like to turn into cash um, within the next year would be considered a current asset and clearly non-current assets are those that don't so current asset examples think about this cash at bank it's already there accounts receivable that's people that owe you money inventory that's the goods you have for sale whereas your non-current assets are things like your plant and equipment your furniture and fittings your vehicles your land and buildings you'd expect those things to last much longer than one year next draw down liabilities is also divided up between current and non-current you could have uh, folders for such things as the bank overdraft, your accounts payable, unearned service revenue, so that one should really be in the one line, and current loans. Each of those things there, there, there would be an account for each of those. So in the filing cabinet, remember it's a group of accounts, each one of these um, places here really represents an account and non-current assets well that would be a non-current loan as an example then owner's equity there's two stages to owner's equity we'll go down to the bottom and we'll see there's the capital part so that's the money the owners put in or the, the money the owners take out and as well as that there's the equity that the owners can build up by operating the business successfully and what makes that up well the revenues will increase equity and expenses will reduce equity so how do we know what autumn's Ida go how do we know the order of the items in the filing cabinet and this is our chart of accounts so what order does the chart of accounts go in well there is the big picture stuff on the chart of accounts And what's the big picture stuff on the chart of accounts? We've already seen the uh, different drawers, the assets, liabilities and owners equity. So uh, items go in the order of the accounting equation. So assets come first, then liabilities, then owners equity. So top drawer assets, second drawer liabilities, third drawer owners equity. And then within each drawer, they go in order of liquidity. So the current items will come first and the non-current items will come next. Well, this is true of the assets and the liabilities. Um, and within the current items, we need to also put them in the order of liquidity. So that means how likely are they, or how quickly are they likely to turn into cash? So cash is typically going to be at the top because it's already cash. Then, you, then accounts receivable will be up fairly high because you've already made a sale for someone you're just waiting them to pay the money whereas inventory you'd expect to be lower down because you still need to make the sale the chart of accounts can vary from business to business because it's shaped by the the needs of the business and these needs are what information people want out and also how hard or easy it is to use you'll find with um, increasing computerization that um, charts of accounts are becoming more complex because it's still easy to put that information together and it's easy to group and summarize uh, a number of accounts into larger accounts an account is where you summarize all of your transactions relating to one category so for instance your cash at bank your rent everything that's related to your cash at bank will go into your cash at bank account the, what this also means if when you uh, uh, go to your account so if you go to your rent account you can find out all the information you need about the rent you've paid
is what would often recall, call an audit trail. So you'll see a total for rent, then you can look back through the account for rent and see all the money that's come in for rent or all money that's gone out for rent. You do have an account for each uh, item that you wish to generate a separate total for. And so something we've already mentioned, you may have one account for stationery, supplies, but you may even have separate accounts for paper envelopes, paper clips. It would be conceivable that um, the paper envelopes, paper clips were all subsidiary accounts to the stationery suppliers, so you could report at different levels. Um, something that we have already mentioned about the uh, in increased number of accounts, but with improved computerization and barcoding, people are increasing the number of accounts that they do have. So a chart of accounts, a list of all your accounts is called the chart of accounts and we do know that every business will not necessarily have the same chart of accounts. Here is a simple overview of a chart of accounts. So let's look at some of the things you'll notice. We have assets first, followed by liabilities, followed by equity. Assets, we have current assets followed by non-current assets. In liabilities, we have current liabilities followed by non-current liabilities, even though I haven't put a category in there for non-current liabilities. In owner's equity, we have a capital account and a drawings account and an income summary. Now, what's the income summary? It's uh, not a very, very often used account, like three times a year. Um, well, it's used once a year for three transactions, but it's an important account. This is what we use for closing entries. And what happens? Well, simplistically, we take uh, all our expenses, including the cost of goods sold, and we empty them into the summary account. We take all our revenues and empty them into the summary account, and then we empty the, empty the summary account into the revenue account. And you can also see in the chart of accounts we have revenues and expenses and the revenues and expenses are really a subset of owner's equity because as we've seen by the income summary all of these items from the revenue, cost of goods sold and expenses will be emptied into the owner's equity account. And again you can see they also have an account number and it's, this is a fairly typical type numbering um, something along this structure that you'll have assets um, in the 100s, liabilities in the 200s, um, equity in the 300s, revenue 400s, cost of goods sold which is related to revenue in the 500s and expenses in the 600s. Now that will work. Then we need to look at the ledger accounts and you've already had some exposure to T accounts. Let's look at some of the characteristics of uh, a T account big thing, debits are on the left. So in every T account you have you record debits on the left, credits on the right. And credits are on the right hand side. So some general rules of debit and credit. Well, debits and credits are applied in accordance with the accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. To signify an increase in an asset, we use a debit. To signify an increase in a liability, we use a credit. And to signify an increase in owner's equity, we use a credit. So our